Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have the definite integral from 0 to natural log of 4 of e to the t over the square root of e to the 2t plus 9 dt. I promised after the last integral of the day to do one that's a little bit less spicy. So hopefully you guys can all get this one successfully. If you want a little hint, I did first a u sub and then a trig sub. You could go straight to trig sub, but I think the u sub helps things out quite a bit. So I'm going to go in first and let u equal e to the t. And then that means du would be e to the t dt, which is perfect since we have that right there in the numerator. And then remember e to the 2t, that's e to the t squared. So that's going to turn into u squared. The only thing I have left to do is change my limits of integration. So remember these limits here, natural log of 4 and 0, belong to the variable t. So I'm going to substitute them in for t to get the new limits in terms of u. u of 0 will be e to the 0, which is 1. And then u of natural log of 4 is e to the natural log of 4, which is 4. All right, here we go. Then let's rewrite everything in terms of u. Definite integral from 1 to 4. And then e to the t dt in the numerator, remember that's just du. And then the denominator is going to be square root of u squared plus 9. How are we doing? All right, good. Now I'm looking here, it's trig sub time. So I can't do another substitution because I don't have anything else. If I were to try to substitute u squared plus 9, we're stuck. And since there's addition in the denominator, then I'm going to choose to let u equal 3 tangent theta. If you need to review trig sub, I have the video linked in the description. From here, let's differentiate both sides. du would be 3 secant squared theta d theta. And then again, yes, we need to change our limits of integration. Now, when we do trig sub, it's a little different. But to not get jumbled up in your head, all you need to do is say these limits, 4 and 1, belong to the variable of the integral right now, u. So I'm going to substitute them in for u in my let statement. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's change our limits. And I have a whole video explaining the difference when you change limits of integration for u sub versus trig sub. If you're struggling with this, I'll link it in the description too. Okay, so 4 belongs to u, so that means 4 equals 3 tan theta. Good. Okay, that means 4 thirds is equal to tangent theta. Hmm, can you think of an angle where tangent of that angle is 4 thirds? I can't. It's nothing nice from the unit circle. So what do we do? We just say this is going to be tan inverse of 4 thirds. All right. And then let's change the other limit now. So 1, that's u, equals 3 tan theta. Again, 1 third equals tan theta. So then can you think of some angle that we know, a common angle on the unit circle where tangent is 1 third there? No. So then again, theta is going to be tan inverse of 1 third. All right. Now, each of these represents some angle. For now, what I'm going to do is kind of label them separately. I'll call this one theta 2, and this is theta 1. You'll see why in a minute, okay? So now let's rewrite our integral all in terms of thetas. So my new lower limit is tan inverse of 1 third. I know, kind of gross, but you just got to deal with it. And then my new upper limit is tan inverse of 4 thirds. And then instead of du in the numerator, I'm going to have all of this right here. 3 secant squared theta d theta over square root u squared. u squared would be 9 tan squared theta plus 9. Voila. Okay. Now we get to have some fun factor, use our Pythagorean identities and clean this guy up. So underneath the radical, I can factor out a 9 and then I have tan squared theta plus 1, 
which remember tan squared theta plus one is secant squared theta. So all of that is sitting underneath the radical. So if I take the square root, I'm gonna end up with three, technically absolute value of secant theta, but we always make sure that those trig functions are positive when we trig sub, so you don't have to write the absolute value. So we have tan inverse one third, tan inverse four thirds. In the numerator, three secant squared theta d theta over, I have square root of this quantity, so it's just gonna be three secant theta. Fabulous, the threes cancel out as well as one of the secant thetas that's in the numerator. So then we're almost at the home stretch. You guys are doing great. Integral, tan inverse one third, tan inverse four thirds, and then we just have secant theta d theta. Do you remember the antiderivative of secant theta? Oh good, it's natural log, absolute value. Secant theta plus tan theta, and then this is all gonna get evaluated from tan inverse of one-third to tan inverse of four-thirds. Okay, we're almost there. So now we have natural log, absolute value, secant of tan inverse of four-thirds plus tangent of tan inverse of four-thirds, upper limit, minus, then I need to put the lower limit in. I need some space. Natural log, absolute value, secant of tan inverse of one-third plus tangent of tan inverse of one-third. Okay. Now, this is where it's helpful that I labeled the angles, so we can we need two triangles in this scenario. Remember I told you theta one and theta two, because we're gonna draw two little triangles for these guys. Let's do that right here. Okay, let's do a theta two triangle. What this says is tangent of theta two is four thirds. So that's gonna be right here, that's my theta two. Tangent is the ratio of the opposite over adjacent side. The hypotenuse I could find by the Pythagorean theorem, or maybe you go, oh, this is that famous three, four, five triangle. Love it. And then similarly, tan inverse of one third, that's theta one. So I'm gonna draw another triangle. They're not to scale. That's not really important. Here's theta one. Tangent of theta one is one third. That's opposite over adjacent. And then the hypotenuse would be Excellent, rad 10. So now we're gonna use these triangles here to help us finish this problem off. So we have natural log, absolute value. What this is saying is find secant of theta two because tan inverse of four thirds is just this angle theta two. Secant is ratio of hypotenuse over adjacent. So that would be five thirds plus this one we really have no work to do because tangent of tan inverse of four thirds, I'm just gonna get back four thirds again. That's nice. Okay, great. Minus natural log, absolute value. Now we need secant of theta one. Secant again, ratio of hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's rad 10 over three. Plus last one is gonna give us one third again. Okay, so to clean this up, we're gonna do something a little clever because you notice how everybody has denominator three. Yes, okay. So we're gonna have here natural log. I don't need absolute value anymore. Everybody's positive. This is nine thirds minus natural log rad 10 plus one over three. Are we good? Okay. I didn't reduce this to three on purpose because now I can use one more log property, combine them into a single logarithm. I have natural log nine thirds over rad 10 plus one over three. And then the threes will cancel out completely. So then we're just left with natural log. I wanted that to be seamless. Boom, nine over rad 10 plus one. 
Okay. You could, if it so bothers you, rationalize the denominator. I don't think it's helpful. Um, the answer in the back of the book for this problem didn't combine it into one logarithm. They just left it as natural log of 9 minus natural log rad 10 plus 1. So, of course, that's acceptable as well. All right. Very good. And that concludes your integral of the day. How was it? Was it less spicy than the last one I put? I think that last one with the partial fractions was ooh, spicy. If you haven't seen it, go back in the playlist. Did you guys solve this on your own? Did you do it differently? You could just go straight for the trig sub in the beginning, but I think it's hard. So I, I feel like doing that use sub kind of just helps you. But that's also an option. If you did something completely different, I'd love to hear it as well. So thanks, you guys, so much for your support. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back with more content soon. However, summer school has commenced, so I'm back to teaching Busy Bee Professor V, and my free time's limited. I'll be checking in, though, and you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!